Hello to everyone. I've been keeping this idea in mind for a very long time, and finally the time has come for me to tell you more about the place where I live and where I was born. Belarus is divided into six major regions and numerous districts that are parts of a separate region. I live in the Gomel region, which is southeast of Belarus, and Koma district. Koma district, according to the statistical data 2021, is considered to be the second poorest district in Belarus. But for several years, we've been holding the first place in this chart of the poorest districts in Belarus. The average salary in my district is approximately 700 Belarusian rubles, and that is equivalent to $280. But keep in mind that that's the average salary. There are a lot of people that earn less than this amount of money. Just for comparison, the richest district in Belarus is Soligorsk district. It's one of the richest because of the potassium salt mines that are very popular here. The average salary there is 1,700 Belarusian rubles, that's equivalent of almost $700. Presently, I live in a small town called Korma. The population here is around 8,000 people. We have a beautiful river nearby, the Sarj River, which is one of the biggest tributary to the Dnieper. Our district is one of the heavily affected by Chernobyl disaster districts. That's why most of my childhood I remember numerous checkups, especially thyroid checkups. Despite the fact that Karma is my native town, I was born in one of the nearby villages. That's why today I'm going to tell you more about the village where I was born, because presently I have a country house there and most of the footage that you see is taken in this place. The name of the village is Barsuke, and in fact, it's not entirely a village, it's an agro-town, because there is a sovhoz, or as it's called, state farm in here. So that's the highway that divides the village into two parts. This part is more modern, so a lot more people live in here. The second part of the village, by the way, that's the part where we live, is a lot smaller and you can see houses that are very old. But we have a shop, post office is there. And school is there. We have approximately 450 people living here. We used to have more, but just because there was a decline in agriculture, a lot of people moved to bigger towns like Korma or any other. The state farm owns a cow farm in a plot of land where wheat and corn are planted every year. The state farm used to be really prosperous several years ago and there was a huge influx of people who wanted to work for the state farm. Nowadays, there are not so many people who are working here and the state farm tries to attract as many people as possible by providing free housing for them. But the point is that you have free house only when you're working for the state farm. When you are done with it, you have to move out. On our street, we have a line of houses that are owned by the state farm and provided for people who work for it. They're not in their best shape because not many people want to work for the corporation which is in decline. That's why sometimes these houses are without any dwellers and no one takes care of them. Most of the people who live in this village have homesteads and plots of land for cultivation. Agriculture in our village helps to make both ends meet for the salary is rather low in this area. People rely on what they grow and what they store for winter. My homestead is primarily agricultural. Most of the land is used for cultivation. But before telling you more about it, let's speak into my godmother's homestead. She holds the title of the best homestead in the village. She won several prizes for the decoration of it.
Several years ago, almost every homestead used to have livestock, like horses, cows, chickens, ducks, geese, rabbits, goats, and so on. But the world moves on, and it affected the village as well. Nowadays, you're lucky when you see a horse or a cow or a goat. I would say that one in five or even eight homesteads has a cow or a horse. It's easier to keep a goat or chicken, but the village is not the same as it used to be, at least the way I remember from my childhood. That's the sales contract for our house. You see, that's very old, but I was really surprised that you could see clearly what is written here because with time, such documents just lose their color. Well, we bought our house on the 28th of July in 1966 and it was bought by my great-grandfather. But for most of the time, my grandmother and my grandfather were living there. So we are in possession of this house for approximately 55 years. But, you know, my grandmother told my mother that this house was built in 1947, right after the Second World War. So that's very old. At that time, the price for this house was 850 rubles. I don't know how much is that and what's the equivalent of it right now but my mom told me that for that time that was very expensive that's the portrait of my grandmother she was living there for her whole life and my grandfather he died early so my grandmother for most of the time was living alone there the yard that you see now is the result of different transformations that were taking place during the past years we used to have two large bonds, only one of them is left, canals, hen houses. With time, it became hard to keep livestock, so we removed the bonds, and the removal of the bonds gave us more land for cultivation. This whole plot is in our possession, even this part, till that trees. But we cultivate only part of it because with years, it became very to cultivate all of it. That's why here we have grass that we trim and use for hot grass or mulching or anything of this kind. But can you imagine that, that previously, not so long ago, we used to cultivate all of that. And back then we had horses, everything we did was without machinery. So that's how long it is. Most of the cases we grew wheat here and a lot of potatoes. Especially now because the weather is rather wet and we have the rain season, you can see a lot of grass thriving. In comparison to the house that was bought in 1966, this version of the house is unrecognizable. Thank you for watching. I hope that I shed more light on the place that I originate from and where I live, as well as on the present day state of the district where my hometown is situated. Stay tuned for more interesting videos. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.